It's my pleasure to be here in the Tata Theatre of the National Centre for the Performing Arts, uh, bringing you this very special recorded production of Seawall. And I'm sat here with actor Jim Saab, and we're going to have a bit of a discussion about the play, just to let you in a little bit on our process and on the way that we've been thinking about it. So, Jim, awesome to be here. Yeah. Now, what was your reaction when you first read the text? Mm, I loved it. My favourite kind of text uh, to read is one where you you read it and it leaves you with this overwhelming and huge feeling but you don't know the mechanics of it quite yet you don't yeah. know how all the pieces fit, fit together but you want to find out you you want to explore it and you want to unravel this little mystery that the writer has laid out there's a line in the play which is I have the complete and total inability to cry. But the first few times I read it, if I tried to follow the punctuation as uh, Simon had written it, uh, I, I always wound up in tears. Mm. Doing it with a year between doing it for a live performance yep. and then being able to recreate it in these unusual circumstances, but you know, being able to use this theatre in this way yeah. and do it, re-rehearse it multiple times, and you're a year older. What, how's that experience been? I was discovering things every run through, mm. which is still the case. Mm. But we, we, talked about, we talked about how there were certain things in the text, like his wife and the routines and loving her and having an eight-year-old child that these are things that I would, there was a bit of a stretch for me to understand and for me to relate to because at the time I didn't even know if I was suited for a relationship, re, a, a, like a, a, a long term one. Um, and I don't think about children almost at all. So what's changed in the year is not only am I in a very happy uh, relationship, but I also adopted a cat. And I know you can't make those parallels in the same way, but I found it so much easier to relate to those lines than I, I ever had before. I think the pandemic has been a good time for people to come to terms with the fact that they are lonelier than they perhaps think, that they are emptier than they perhaps think, and that, you know, this uh, play makes it very clear that the relationships you forge and the little things, the little, little day-to-day -day things are, is the, the meat of life in a way. So, mm. I love what you said about the seats though, because mm -hmm. I see them very much as potential. It's not a, it's not a graveyard, right. it's not a ghost time, although we have a ghost light. Yeah. It's just that the ghost light is there as a kind of like, as a, as a symbol of hope. And it's a symbol of, you know, we will be back and that's, important that everybody kind of keeps that in mind I think that with yep. this and that I feel like that's an enduring factor in this play that despite what happens is, is that there is still a kind of sense of hope at the end of that. Deeply so I think it runs all the way through I think there's so much awkwardness and, and guilt as well um, but it it's never devoid of hope. He, he, the way he talks about everyone, the way he talks about the entire situation, he knows that he's being, that he was ridiculous, that he behaved ridiculously. And mm. it's not that he shut it out, and it's not that he's pretended he didn't, and it's not that he justifies himself. It's not that he does any of those things. He actually even, in dealing with the cruelest thing he ever did, the sentence ends on a very loving and hopeful slant. That one always gets me. I don't know why that one gets me so much, but I, I think it's because he's struggling. He can't say it, but he, wa he just wants to, he wants to get to it so badly. The sentence is just constructed that way with the punctuation. Is that it's catching in his throat, but he doesn't give up. He goes all the way to the end of the sentence, and I just think that that's beautiful. I think it's beautiful. But how has it felt to be rehearsing in a rehearsal room again and with a text like this. Oh, it was, it was so good. It happened to be, unfortunately, again, at a time when everything went mental. 
Um, <laughs> but uh, just being back in this space, being able to stand on the stage, working on a text, working with a director who understands text far better than me, who is constantly able to see what I am doing and what the potential is and where to prod and where to, you know, all of that is just incredible. I, you know, I, I learned so much, so thanks. <laughs>